the uh, zoning commission regular meeting for uh, January 4th is called to order at 712. Please call the roll. Marzullo? Here. Roop? Here. Fisher? Here. Manley? Here. Kalis? Here. In the audience are trustees Engelman, Swedek, and Astro, and Zoning Inspector Wilson. All right, thank you. So we'll uh, start by reviewing the uh, regular meeting minutes from December 7th. Has everybody had a chance to read? The Chair, program? before you do that, could you read the virtual option? Yes. Thank you. This meeting is being recorded for transcription purposes and the written minutes and attachments, if any, will serve as the official record of this meeting. On behalf of our virtual attendants, audience, we ask the public joining us in person to approach the podium in the event that they would like to speak. You'll need to announce their name and address prior to speaking. Additionally, we have the audience, we ask the audience to save personal conversation for after the meeting as additional voices can cause confusion for those attending virtually. Okay. And now we will get into the regular meeting minutes from December 7th. Has everybody had a chance to review them? And have there been any, any adjustments noted? Any changes from anyone? All right. I make a motion to accept the minutes. Moved by Ms. Crew. Anyone like to second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Fisher. Please call the roll. Marzullo? Yes. Crew? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Manley? Yes. Kalis? Yes. Uh, do you, in this case, you'd want to abstain. Because you weren't, you weren't, you weren't, wasn't at the, at gotcha. meeting. you weren't a voting member. And now we'll go through the um, the staff report of the text resolution that we sent up to uh, Medina County Planning Commission. Chair, do we want to go to new business first since we have a site plan? A lot of times we'll go through the yeah to get those people out of here first, and then we'll... it's up to you. But I think yeah, no, that's we'll... fine. We'll, we'll not waste their time and get them uh, in and out. Moving on, so we'll move the at uh, Mr. Fisher's. Um, request will move the new business to the uh, ahead of the old business, and that is going to be a preliminary site plan review for, of the estates at Prairie Vista. Um, has everybody had a chance to review the preliminary site plan for Prairie Vista? Right. Everyone want to take a look at it yet? Mm -hmm. All right. And we have a representative from the developer group. Yes, sir. Wanna please state your name. And uh, Travis Crane, 1310 Sharon Copley Road, Davy Resource Group. Thank you very much for moving us ahead in the agenda. We greatly appreciate it. <laughs> Save you some time, right? My day started at 7 a.m. today, so a little later. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, is there a staff report you go through? I can't remember. Or do you want me just to give a brief summary of the project? Actually, looking through my um, stuff that I've got up here, why don't you start by letting me know a little bit more about the project? Sure. And I don't know that we have the staff report. Yeah, yeah, it's in there. This is um, a project south of Laurel Road off of West 130th Street, obviously on the east side of West 130th Street, because I think it's Brunswick Hills across the street from us. Um, so we're complying with, um, I believe it's the R1 section of the code, two acre lots. Um, it's a uh, by right use, it's a permitted Mike use. Can, uh, what might con con confuse the thing is that originally this was called the hollow at Willow Lakes, is that? It's it's a similar project. Yeah, we are in front of this board. I, I can't remember. I'm thinking it may have been two years ago. It may have been longer than that. But this is the same property and basically the same. 
yes. present or the yes. submission. Okay. Yes, sir. That's what I thought from my. Okay. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure. Please, please, please. So we have. Uh, 21 sublots, two acre minimum on roughly plus or minus 54 to 55 acres. It is a, just for the record, it is a private street that our client's proposing, not a public dedicated right away. So that was actually my first question. So I'm glad that you, it does note that it's a private street. As the, I didn't see in the engineering report from county. I know that when the uh, Village Oaks, the senior housing went in, there's a crowning of the street. And for private, for public roads, they're crowning it, I think, this way. And for private, they're crowning it this way. And so they required that one to be crowned differently. And the purpose of that part, in part, was to make sure that that road could never become the township road. Mm -hmm. Has, have they said anything to you about that? Have you had any discussions about the road and how it's going to be formed yet? So we last night we were at the uh, county planning meeting. So we did obtain approval from uh, for the preliminary plan for the Medina County um, to, um, Planning Commission. Uh, that was not an item that came up. Okay. Uh, we we do right. have uh, on the first page of the plan, page one of three, we do have a proposed section. Mm -hmm. um, it is a 22 foot wide section. It is, it is a crowned pavement section, but we are proposing an alternative pavement composition than Hinkley typically has for public roads. I think Hinkley requires a concrete pavement section. We're planning on doing asphalt for this. I think our subdivision standard or our step subdivision standards still require the exact same requirements for private roads as they do public roads. Inspector, am I correct? So I think it supposed to be concrete. I'm not sure about this. Oh, they, they typically don't. Usually, usually when in the county subdivision regs, when they refer to um, that terminology of public are the private streets being comparable to public streets? Usually it's in the roadway geometry, the horizontal curvature of the road, the vertical alignment of the road, and the, and the road's general ability to support it, the needed traffic, fire trucks, trash trucks, you know, safety service vehicles, things of that nature. My, I've been doing this for about 20 years. I don't think we've ever been held to um, the same material composition on a private street. I think we'll have to check into that because I, 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 I'm pretty confident. I, it, it's in the res, trustee resolution final article um, that we do have a requirement that they have the same material, and I think that that was part of senior housing as well as that it had. To, that's why the whole their whole road is concrete. Is uh, they were required to make it concrete as a private street. Okay, but I, we'll check on that. I, that's yeah. That, we've been doing concrete on that product for years too, so I don't. It may have been just circumstantial, but. Uh, this doesn't have to come up now, obviously. Do you know yet whether it's going to be gated? And if so, I would make sure that you just submit that as part of your final site plan when you do the landscaping review. It is something we, it's something we are considering and it, it might happen, but I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, so I assume that's something we'd probably want to have a discussion with the fire chief on before we made that decision. And the fire chief and the police services as well yeah. to make sure that they have access sure. to the series and gate. I think that the, the only other question that I had of we dealt with water mitigation, the wetlands that are presently there. Um, I know that that was a concern that was raised yesterday at the, at the planning commission as well mm -hmm. by several of the residents who are joining, are joining this property. Um, my understanding is that the, that the lakes that are existing will remain only be rebuilt based upon the requirements for the subdivision and to meet whatever the county engineer is requiring for the water um, to exit at the proper rate. Yeah, right. The, the stormwater management requirements we have to adhere to both on the county level from the Medina County Highway Engineer and, and EPA are pretty, pretty strict. Um, mm -hmm. So we're proposing, uh, there are currently two existing ponds on the property. Uh, we're gonna use one for stormwater management. We're also building another stormwater basin on the east side of the property. Um, just a general practice is if water is flowing east, you want to keep it flowing east, and if water is flowing west, you want to keep it flowing west, and trying to adhere to the um, to the existing watersheds. That's that's why there's two stormwater management basins. And then the the wetlands you'll have to submit for the EPA 
to, to determine whether the EPA or Army Corps has any jurisdiction over the wetlands. Submit to the Army, to submit to the Army Corps of Engineers to get our jurisdictional determination, which I believe has been done already. Um, and then the next step is submit uh, uh, submit to the, either the EPA or the um, Corps, depending on who has jurisdiction over what wetland to get that permit. Okay. So we're using uh, HZW as the, the consultant for, for wetlands on that, and they'll, they'll handle that. Perfect. And I know it says it in here, but this will be uh, city water and then city sue, sewer. Yes, sir. And then you'll have a pump system. Will each in home have an individual pump to pump to the sewer? Yes. Okay. And then the road, since it's a private road, uh, the HOA covenants will govern the road and the maintenance of the road and that sort of thing? Yes, sir. Okay, so then can you try to make sure that you have those as part of the final site plan so that those can be reviewed by legal yes. uh, before our final site plan? I see that there's the, uh, the island and the cul-de-sac. Um, I know the, the trustees have previously um, requested no islands. I, I don't know. Um, trustee um, Engelman kind of new and putting you on the spot here, but um, is that still the desire of the trustees to have no islands in cul-de-sacs? I know previously it was due to trying to get um, fire snow and snow. fire snow. removal. More snow than I think that it was, it was yeah. snow, but it's also gonna be a private yeah. street. So I don't know if it still applies. So I will also say Rock Ridge also has an island in it. That's the new subdivision going in right now with no homes. Mm -hmm. That's got an island. We looked it up as part of that. And as long as the HOA is accepting responsibility for the island, my understanding is the subdivision standards are allowing an island. Okay. So that's our, that's our understanding also. I think there's been some discussion with uh, the township in the past. Mm -hmm. And our understanding is as long as the HOA takes main, maintenance ownership of that island that I think the township permits it. I think this was approved. I think that this one was approved. Okay. Um, and obviously, you know, in the uh, staff report, we're also seeing the, the questions that um, Mr. Wilson submitted, um, and you, you already have the answers to a lot of these. Um, the setback, I, I haven't even had a chance to really review it, but the 30 foot setback on um, so is that already updated? It, it's not updated on the plan, but we're uh, we're aware of it, and it was a good catch by Mr. Wilson. And it was, I think it was inaccurate. It was mis misinterpretation between what's a side and a rear yard, okay. and that that house will be addressed to the private street. Therefore, it makes the um, the the, the, the north okay. the north the north the lot side. will actually be the rear yard. Yeah. yeah. Um, typically, it's yeah, whatever. Ad, if you have a corner lot, whatever house, whatever street it's addressed to, the the lot line behind that becomes the rear. Yeah. All right. And then, since this is a preliminary sand site plan, we can make sure that's just a bit adjusted by the final site plan. <laughs> Does anybody have uh, any questions, any other questions for this preliminary site plan? And right now what we'll do is go through the um, preliminary site plan submission requirements just to make sure that they are all present. Um, and then we can either approve or recommend modifications or deny it. Um, do we want to let them, members of the audience speak before we go through the checklist or after the checklist regarding this particular topic? Um, we, to I'm, I'm happy to let people speak if they have objections or are in support. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. State your, uh, state your name and address. And yes, Alfred LaPointe, 2065 West 130th Street, Hinckley. Uh, my property borders 
the majority of the south part of the subdivision going in, as well as I have property in Brunswick Hills directly across the street from that from said property. My concern is water. Historically, the land that, that they're building on is nothing but water, historically. Even during the dry months, there's a lot of water there. When the, when the property was initially sold I don't know, two, three years ago, there was a truck doing some sort of survey. I don't know what they were doing. I assumed it's survey. Back there, got stuck. It was a, like a big GM truck or a Ford pickup truck, right? Big one. So they called a tow truck and the tow truck got stuck. They had to call a tractor trailer tow truck to pull it out. So this is how, and this was during the dry season. So there's a lot of water there. So my concern is not with the, the fact that there's homes going in, but where the water's flowing um, is a huge concern for me because I have horses and, and you know, I have a mini farm I don't want that flooded out. I already have water issues on my own, which I, which we deal with. I don't need more. Um, and when I went and presented to Medina County last night, they were like, yeah, we don't have the engineering final proof. We don't know, but they are guaranteed, they guaranteed me verbally that there would be less water coming into my property from this subdivision than more. So then I said, okay, but we'll see that in writing somewhere. And she said, they, they wouldn't, they started going talking amongst themselves at that point. Mm -hmm. Well, my concern is I, I'm glad that there's stormwater basins being put in on the east side. I think that's great. Um, but the big stormwater basin on the road where all the trees were cut out of, and there's like a 20 foot tree or 15 foot wide tree, this, this huge tree that was cut down. Um, that's already full and it's full year round. How is that really going to catch any, any of the water? I, and there are other pond that's there as well. It, like I'm confused. I understand the East side. That's great. They're building there, but I, I'm questioning that pond being able to handle more water because it's already full. And then let's say one of those ponds caves in that house in that one lot that has this huge pond in front of it or I don't know what it's called, I'm calling it a pond. Um, what if that pond collapses? Who's responsible for correcting it? Is it the county? Is it the is it Hinkley Township? Is it the resident that owns that property at that point? Um, because that'll affect my property across the street, as well as it could it could affect all the other properties around it. Because um, water travels fast, and and we get torrential rains here, and. That's where my concern lies. And I really don't see anybody giving me any comfort knowing that I'm not, when this subdivision's in and everybody's gone, I'm gonna be coming to you guys and you guys are gonna say, buyer beware. And I'm a resident. So I need to understand what all this means. And if it's gonna be in the, the final one, please make sure it really is instead of just appeasing me to walk away. I'm not saying that's what you do. So don't take it that way, but I'm just concerned about water runoff. And I don't know that that's really been considered to the point where how much water is really back there and all of the land surrounding it has a ton of water. So the, the little bit of impact you're going to make in one area is going to definitely impact everyone around there. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there anything you would like to say regarding the stormwater runoff? Um, do you have any specific questions? Um, just, I mean, if, is there any way we can we can kind of appease some of his concerns? Um, I know we can we can do a uh, down river water study. But Medina County even questioned who would own the catch basins after the the, the property is built mm -hmm. up, and no one could answer the question. Okay. So that should be a concern as well. So typically the HOA takes responsibility for management and maintenance mm -hmm. stormwater manage of stormwater facilities. Um, there is a requirement when the plats filed that the county will have a right mm -hmm. to do that maintenance if the HOA fails to, mm -hmm. but the primary responsibility falls on the HOA for stormwater management basis basins historically. Is that in there? The, the association? The, the... It'll be in the HOA documents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> so it's going to be in the HOA document that we you submit with the, all of the plans, or is it going to be? One yes, of, if it'll like, be in the document. Will we the document is public be... before you rubber stamp it. Yes. Well, you you won't necessarily. No, yeah. you you could make a public records request <laughs> for it. It won't be. We don't just post it online or something where you would have access to it. I'm but just, you're welcome to inspect. I guess what it. I'm asking is how what kind of assurance other than what we just talked about now that we're going to have that is actually going to be in there. So I'm, I, not, we, I'm just saying. No, just, no totally understand. They're um, kind of, they're typically in every one. Yeah. I mean that's that's a that's standard operating procedure. Yeah. Right. And when when the Army Corps of Engineers blesses off on the, if if they bless off, when they bless off on it, that is ensuring that the water flow is no different than it used to be. So it should not, and it, they will require an engineering study to actually show, all right, the water is not gonna leave the property. It's not gonna flood your property. It's not gonna flood your neighbors or the north, northern neighbor. It will go where it's supposed to go into catch basins or into the um, the the roadside ditches and travel without having. Okay, I'm I'm going to give you an example of why I'm concerned with this. It's not again. It's not the building. It's just I've lived through this. I used to live in Cuyahoga County. Okay, all these engineers that all these things you're talking about, we had it, and in my property. I had a catch basin probably the size of this parking lot. It'll never flood, never. Well, never happen. And I had to pay out of pocket to have a new wall built to catch the water. And I was the property owner. And what I was told by the county was buyer beware. And that's why I'm asking who's going to own responsibility for that one that never comes Who's actually going to be responsible for it? That's what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. and, and I think part of that will depend upon what's causing it, right? The water is supposed to flow a natural way. And I think that your, your plan will require, you're still required to maintain the natural flow of the water. You're allowed to collect it. They're allowed to slow release it. They're required to slow release it. But the water still has to flow in the same direction that Correct. it's flowing now. So we, they can't do anything that's going to change that flow of the water. I'm not asking that. I'm saying the water's flowing this mm -hmm. way, okay? It's flowing downhill, whatever, however you want to work. So what happened to us was that it was flowing, and because we started getting more rain than we normally do, that flow filled it up so quickly. It may be natural, but that wall, if it's too fast, is going to go, it's going to shatter. That's what I'm saying. Who's responsible for it at that point? That, I, that's, I'm not trying to be a, a jerk about it. I'm just trying to understand that because it's going to impact me when that happens. And I need to know who do I go after because my property will be affected by it. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, it would be something that the HOA is going to be responsible for maintaining those um, storm, storm management basins. And they, as a development company, will be looking at, all right, how do we keep this, the water on this property going through our storm management system? <clears throat> now, if there is too much rain, if it's a 100-year flood. Well, they're, they're happening more frequently than you realize. <laughs> but anyways, I, I know what you're saying. And, and ultimately, what it comes down to is we, as a zoning commission, cannot impose on them more stringent standards. I'm not asking for that. I'm asking who's responsible. That, that's that's all I'm asking. It would be. It, it's really probably. It would be no different than if you know my my neighbor and I both have giant ponds on our on our lots. If one of those walls gave way, it, 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 whether it's a subdivision so it's or whether it's an individual, well, you would go after the HOA, who is the primary responsibility for that. Would be the HOA and and those homeowners. Um, would be the primary responsibility. Now, Medina County can step in and do the repair, or Medina County will be can be involved to force the HOA to do something. But it, it I, I don't. There, there's really no difference between a pond that's in an HO or in a community and a pond that's owned by a landowner. I guess the difference is I'm one of the residents that are affected by it, and I know better, so I'm asking. So I'm not asking that that someone give me. I'm just saying. Something will happen at some point, and if it does, wh wh what's my recourse and, and, as the guy 
downhill. Frankly, we're not we're not attorneys. No, I'm not they, asking you to be so we, we no, but you're asking us who who is responsible for it, which is a legal question. We can't tell you. All right, well, in this hypothetical situation, you should go after this person, which okay. is exactly what you're asking. Yeah. Who do I go after? Yeah. We cannot provide that kind of guidance. Them. Okay, so we go after the HOA, they go bankrupt, and then, okay, all right. I'm more worried about damage to my property and the water flow, and right now I'm not really comfortable with the whole situation, and I know that doesn't matter to you, but it matters to me. I, I, I think it, it does it's matter. Right. Yeah. It's just that we're not the experts on this. But I will say, but did you- are working with the experts. I'm asking- do you I, just, with I don't know if this makes you feel any, it matters to me. It, it's my job. We have to get this I job permitted. Right now, so, does, but I am not an attorney, so I can't answer your question on, you know, who do you go I after? So, you, but yeah. last night, someone said from, that was representing you guys, that you guys were rebuilding the wall or something like that to catch the storm basins. I don't know if it's accurate or not. I mentioned that during the, I don't remember the exact wording that we see is that during mm -hmm. the meeting. But what I'm getting at is I'm not expecting you to fix the problem tonight. I'm just trying to understand which, as a property owner, I have to be concerned. Mm -hmm. I have almost 13 acres that, that can be affected by it. And then I have an almost a number of three acres across the street that's going to be affected by it. I just need someone to act to, to just give me some, some assurances that you understand what I'm talking about. Because once you build that, you're gone. So, if, if so I'm if, trying to figure out if if I may if I may interject here. So you're you're saying you want someone to tell you? <clears throat> no, I'm asking. I'm not telling you. To tell I, me I, no. I, but you, you're you you're asking for an expert's opinion. An expert is giving you his opinion, and you're discounting it. No, I didn't discount anything you said. You're you're he's telling you that the water is going to stay on here. It's going to be managed by these stormwater management basins. Okay. And you're saying no, it's not. No, I'm it's going to be an issue for me what I said in was, five years. Right now, I know your concern, but when the when the properties are all sold out, it's not your issue anymore. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. I didn't but, say, but it, it it actually still is his issue because Mr. Crane, you've been working in this area. Your office is right on 18, right? We're on in Sharon Center, right off the okay. circle in Sharon so, Center. I mean, he's he's local and he works local, so the last thing he's going to want to do is destroy your 13, 16 acres and then have a bad reputation, a bad name when he goes to do another project. It's very important to him that these projects work well. Do, do you have a copy of this uh, preliminary uh, plan from yesterday's meeting? Yes. Okay, in that there's two contexts that I think that you should have a communication on. One would be the Medina County engineer. His contact number, his name and his number is listed there. The other one that I would suggest that you contact is the soil, Medina soil and water. His contact information is also listed there. Those two people will be far better subject matter experts on this from a county level and can explain to you the process for what happens if an HOA goes bankrupt, what happens if an HOA dissolves, what happens if there's a breach, who's responsible. They'll be able to give you far more guidance in that area than we will, because we're more focused on the zoning aspects of it, not on the engineering aspects of it. The engineering aspects are really governed by those experts at the county level. And so I would have conversations with those, both of their names, their numbers, and their email addresses are listed in this report. And okay. that's where I would start. Okay. All right. Do HOAs typically carry insurance policies? Yes. Some, some do, some don't, <laughs> as we found out. There's some state regulations too. We are required to carry it. Our HOA is required to carry a $2 million insurance policy as part of that. And we have four leaks. Right. And one of the things that we're requiring now for the final site review is a copy of the HOA. Yes. We weren't requiring that on could, every one. That's kind of what so I was asking. Could, could, that is going to be required. That'll come Can process. I make a suggestion that you get a hold of the uh, the office with your name and address and ask for a copy of the final draft, the final plan, once it's approved here. Okay. They, they can make that available to you and notify you that they have it, if, but you have to put that in writing to them. Okay. And email, email, email that was sufficient. No, he's right, referring right to here. our office. To Suzanne, Suzanne Peter Lang. Yeah. 
if, uh, if you if, if you put her again in writing on notice, she, I'm sure she'll just again. Just so you understand, the reason why I'm concerned is the property across the street from me. The whole frontage has uh, been wiped out a couple times now because of rainwater from that property. So that's another. So that's what sparked this. Sure. It's like it's 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 tearing it apart. And and I don't want you to think any of us don't. It's your home. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. believe me, I I do it's understand. For us. Yes. I mean, yeah, we That's why bought the property across the street. Yes, uh, and, so, it's a big investment. and every single major project that happens in Hinkley Township, almost the number one concern of the residents that surround it is water. Oh, yeah, almost well, every single so water. Ohio is not going to go far. And and water tables are very really high here. So yeah, I'm, I'm worried water. about you know you're going to find there's there's uh, clay pipes under the soil that feed the water to our through our property to that property. You're, mm -hmm. like, from from a hundred years ago, from the farmers, um, so there's water running in every direction. Right. That so you got to understand where my concern is. Again, I'm not worried about the subdivision. You're just bringing up my property values, but but on on top of that, I have to worry about the water. I understand, and that's that's part of our job. And there'll be extensive calculations, extensive back and forth with the county engineer. Probably a three to six month process after this for both imp improvement plans, which you know, we take a three page set of plans and they'll probably be 30 to 50 pages of plans and another half an inch to an inch of calculations of stormwater. Okay. One more question on the sewer that you're putting in. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's going from, from that subdivision to the new one that was just across the street. Yes. Are you, are you, which side of the street are you digging up to put, to put the sewer? In? There's, I think there's a manhole on the west side of 130th on the north side of that project okay. so we'll be discharging into that manhole now whether we will have to jump across the street at some point to get to the east side of west 130th where that happens i'm not sure yet but it'll all take place in the right of way of west 130th street west, west 130th street okay all right thank you this answer one of my questions if you wouldn't mind please uh introduce yourself and give us your address that would be great Gene Pape, 2065, West 130th. Um, we're talking about that wall, the catch basin. It has already collapsed years ago, a muskrat. And if you, any of you have history on that, it is possible that wall will, if there's another muskrat, and that is gonna come across again onto the Brunswick Hills, which is us. Mm -hmm. And our um, swales, they're four feet already. Now, a lot of water is shooting across under the road from your future. We need plans. I called engineer, we have to go up the flow. Well, the flow is just eroding. Ero and after, after a while, this isn't natural because it's creating this one and now it's on top of the property. And then you, somebody came out and put another pipe in for the other neighbor underneath his driveway, it's just too much water at one time, creating new, and that's not natural. It's just too much water coming from the future development in that pond. That pond is draining right now. You're, I don't know if you're draining it or not, but there's two drains on that one, one going this way for overflow, and then the wall is already washed out on the other end. It just, there's constantly water running off of that property. I don't know if there's a natural spring underneath that property or what, but like uh, Al said, we get water constantly from the backyards. It goes through all of your property, across ours, across um, Scott, our other neighbor. We have water all year round. I'm just wondering, how are you gonna get a house? Is there a natural spring anybody aware of on the property? For the future, we have, we have no understanding of the actual property. And I, I have not personally done a site visit. I don't know if mm -hmm. anyone else has. Um, this is just a this is a new plan that was that's just being presented to us. Gotcha. But to to that, you know, unfortunately, I, I wish that Mr. Bindoff would come and say whether his his yes, property exactly. has had less water or more water since that subdivision went in. Uh, but generally, the subdivisions are normally helping to do a more slow release of that water. Um, I think Travis says that your experience that when you develop these, yeah, generally, I, don't, I try not to 
say that or promise that, but that tends to be the, the case be in terms of the flow rates leaving the project post development are usually less than pre development. So again, that there's no promises on that, but normally what you see is the subdivision will help that water control. Okay. One of your diagrams show. So you know, currently that property is call it a vacant property, but it's not it's not being utilized. So now there's an opportunity here for that HOA to take ownership of that dam. The HOA will be maintaining the dam. There'll be a construction process. We'll have to review the, the integrity of that dam. If the county engineer says we need to retrofit that dam, we'll retrofit that dam. Can you please, um, if, excuse me, sir. If, if you're gonna be talking, please I'm sorry. wait until I know, I'm sorry. One, one conversation time so we can all focus on. Thank you. I mean, I've heard some concerns about that dam. Now is the opportunity to, to evaluate that dam. There'll be a, eyes on that dam. If we need to retrofit the dam, the dam will be retrofitted. So any reinforcements to that dam, you guys would take care of during the development process, mm -hmm. which and the, yeah, I was I was equate the delay if if a wall were to that the analogy I try to use, you know, stormwater management is like a bathtub. You know, you're you're intentionally clogging the drain, mm -hmm. um, and the water coming in is the water coming in, and we're we're using rainfall data to determine what's coming in that basin. We're going to create some freeboard, what we'll refer to as freeboard. So if the pond right now is at the top of the dam, you know, we'll create the required freeboard to handle that water coming in, catches it like a, um, like that bathtub and, you know, purposely clogging it up a little bit by design, you know, controlling the different holes in that structure. So it releases at a slower rate and then, you know, it rains and then slowly drops down you know, and, com and accommodates that. And that's all based on uh, the requirements the county has, the rainfall data we have to use. They've updated their rainfall data, um, but we can only work with the data we have. So, so what's confusing to me um, was last night, I'm not saying you said this because you weren't there. Um, someone that represented you said that there was going to be some reinforcement of that wall. There would probably be some retrofitting of the outlet Remember, structure. Yeah, it's, 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 and it's... You didn't tell that from the guy in the county, but you're saying... If it's needed. Well, they were, they were making it sound like it was needed, but I don't know. I don't know, you know if it's needed. Had, so, yeah, I get it, but they represented you guys, so I'm assuming they they talked on your behalf. So that's what was said. It was it's in it was if they're recording like you're doing here, you'd hear it. Okay, I'm sorry, and you were saying. Sure. You mind? Sure. This is what like so does our little eight acres blowing this way. Okay. It's it's not right here. That's not eight acres now is flowing that way. That's eight no, acres. All of it's flowing now. Okay, but you're you're saying that okay, we're gonna have eight acres flowing towards our house when when this is developed. Correct. Well, that's like I, those, that's, that's, that is the those errors flow. are showing current flow. Okay, correct. Yeah, are you referring to page three of right. the plan? The future yeah. will, will kind of mirror that mm -hmm. because again, you have to flow in the natural pathway of the water. But your the, those arrows right now are showing you what's the current flow as well. So it's not changing the flow. It's it's not increasing the flow through your property at all. Right. That, so, that's going to be that that is the requirement of the actual development of these plants. And that's why they have the engineers, that's why they, they get approved by the county. And that's a general schematic of the current drainage pattern of the property. So, you know, to get an understanding to the boards that were in front of both the county, you know, the township that, hey, this is being thought about. And we do have these basins in strategic locations to address what's going on currently on the property. And, and just because I'm, I could use some education on it. Um, when you guys are doing these developments, you're you're taking what is permeable and non-permeable ground and determining, all right, how much more water is going to be coming out because of this structure, this driveway, this road. And that's how you actually get into the engineering aspect of, all right, well, what's the total additional volume of water that we need to, um, that, that we need to account for? Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a general, basis. generally correct, okay. yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you want me to get into detail about it or. <laughs> I would appreciate it, I think most people would fall over asleep. Um, because I, I know, and, and much to the, the homeowner's concerns, I, I totally understand. Like, mm -hmm. 
look, when we have all this vegetation here, that's going to slow down how much water is coming off. It's going to consume a lot of this water. But then once you put concrete there, concrete doesn't slow it down. Concrete doesn't consume it. And that's where the storm water management and the, the engineering flow of it. Actually that's that's what we refer to as the curve number variable. It's called the CN value. It's, okay. it's uh, the higher the number, the less pervious the ground is. So concrete's probably 98, 99. Okay. You know, a, a but mature play, woods, a mature woods is, substrate, then yeah. that's going to have a much higher um, end factor than your CN value. Yeah, CN. Yeah. Than, than like a silt or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. There's mostly it's the ground cover that has the biggest impact. Oh, you know, yeah. woods, you know, mature trees are going to absorb more water than, than concrete, right? But yeah. then within that variable, there's four class A, B, C, D zones of analyzing the type of dirt you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, woods with a A value is, has a different infiltration rate than a woods with a D value. Um, so that's one of the biggest variables in terms of what we look at. And the other one, obviously the biggest one is really your acreage. Yeah. You know, how much acreage is the rain dropping on? Yeah. And then the third valuable is what we refer to as time of concentration. And that that's how long it takes water to get from the extreme, the extreme distance from a time standpoint, which might not necessarily be the same as a distance standpoint. So what's the longest time to get from one end of the watershed to the outlet point pre and post development. And all those are all those calculations are done. What's happening right now and what's going to happen, you know, when we're done and we're prepared, we're comparing those deltas and those, those differences to see, you know, what is the volume and what are the flow rates and, and managing the flow rates. So one of the things, so you're saying that vegetation is is kind of the largest um, determinant of the yeah. CN value. So one of the things you said was um, was fully developed trees. So is there a difference between deciduous and coniferous? Not that I'm aware of. No, and then, no, not not, not not in this calculation. Yes, kind of kind of yeah. the reason I'm also asking that is you know a lot of people like to have um, large landscaping areas, mm -hmm. um, potentially with a lot of mulch. Mm -hmm. Does that affect it? if they have a larger landscaped area as opposed to just plain lawn? So our the curve number we use, which is the infiltration rate for post-development, it's, it's what they refer to in the manual as a composite number. So we're not looking at it as granular as like how much mulch somebody has. That number is defined on, hey, what, do, what is that number for two acre sublots okay. compared to what is that number for you know, apartments at 20 units per acre, right? And it, it varies all the way through there. What is that number for a commercial development for a Walmart, right? That's, and so you're not looking at each house and saying that it has this much sidewalk, this much deck, each was small. There's a general curve number we use for two acre sublots. Right. And that accounts for, you know, future houses, you know, assuming there's grass, you know, and then there's, um, you know, what the pavement is, that type, that type of situation. Awesome. And we're comparing that to what the existing conditions are. And this, this proper, I don't think the delta is going to be that great. You know, if this was all wooded and those mature woods, we'd have a really low curve number to start with. But this is, you know, formerly agriculture, which has a fairly high curve number in itself. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions, comments? Please. Once they start digging, what about all the old uh, clay tiles underground? What do you do when you start breaking all of those? County engineer has standard notes for stormwater management that we'll have in every plan. I think the I think the rule is if you hit a clay tile, the, the contractor, whether it's when they're building a house or when they're building the road, is supposed to attach that clay tile and put it into the drainage system. Okay. Thank you. And if I can just, yeah. Mr. Crane, I, with your um, with your documents that you provided with the preliminary amendment, you did provide an H, uh, uh, at least the preliminary. We did draft draft documents, yeah. So yeah, so that reference is the public street, not the private street, and there's no reference to private streets yeah. at all and maintenance. Of those. those are those are draft yeah. in nature. Yeah, I understand. I appreciate the comment, but those will be refined, and you know, this board will review them. The county planning commission will review them. I believe the county prosecutor reviews them. Um, those will be reviewed in detail also. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure you didn't yeah. think, well, I've submitted it. Well, it Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Those are quite sufficient. All right. Um, if there are no other, no further comments.
from the public, we can uh, move forward with the preliminary site plan submission requirements. Um, this is a checklist that we're going through just to see whether or not the developer has come up with these specific items. It doesn't mean that they meet the zoning commission um, or, or the, the zoning resolution, just simply present or not present in their actual submission. Um, uh, property location map, which is here. Location of existing structures within the development area and access points, yes. The general location of existing buildings, parking, and access drives on parcels with 100 feet within 100 feet of the site, uh, yes. Um, a topographic survey of the proposed development area with contour lines at two foot intervals. Um, the one I'm looking at has five foot intervals. Hey, I think. They but that's the large one that was printed out for us. Yeah, th this one right here, the, yeah, got this two. one's got two, because okay. we're 220 to 230 right there with All right. at least five lines between. Thank you. All right, so that's a yes. Um, existing major vegetation features, wooded areas, and large isolated trees one foot or more in diameter. And that was also included. Mm -hmm. um, location of wetlands as depicted on a delineation produced by a professional wetland specialist licensed by the state of Ohio. The floodplain boundary and floodplain elevation as delineated by the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Rivers and streams and the related river or stream bank, ponds, and water courses. Uh, I believe that's all that one. That's in there. Yeah, it's in there. And... Delineation of existing drainage patterns on the property. Yes. Existing wells and well sites. Yes. The general location. There, there are no wells. Right. I didn't see any. Go ahead. The general location of development areas identified by use, including any fee simple lots and restricted open spaces, open space areas, if part of the if part of the proposed project. I don't believe there are any, correct? There are no open space right. blocks. The general layout of the proposed circulation system for vehicles and pedestrian, other proposed public ways, access points, and the parking and service system. It's the one private room. Uh, summary table showing total acres of the proposed development, the number of acres devoted to each type of use, including streets and open space, and the number of dwelling units by type. That's there. Proposed phases of the project, if the project is to be completed in stages indicating the phases during which any common facilities are anticipated to be con constructed. This is one, one phase. phase. All right. Sir. The following items are well, that's not, 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 a, not applicable. Um, and any other reasonable information that the Township Commission may require in order to evaluate the general concept of the proposed development. Um, I would say that all of those are currently present. Um, and as such, I think that means uh, we can either approve the site plan as permitted or unless people have, unless anyone on the commission has um, things that they would like addressed and submit back to uh, the developer. Were you about to say something, Mr. Fisher? I was just going to make the motion to approve the preliminary site plan. All right. Moved by Fisher. Second. Seconded by Crew. Please call the roll. Arzulo? Yes. Crew? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Van Lee? Yes. Felix? Yes. All right. Motion passes. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. If you don't have a copy of this, it's on the Planning Commission's website. And anything that we, we discuss, anything that you see us looking through on as the commission, you can always do a records request and it will be made available to you. That's, that's no problem at all. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's head back to the old business of everyone's comfortable with that. So the old business is going to be running through the um, all of the proposed text amendments. Um, did everybody have a chance to review the planning commission's notes? 
I, I think that they were pretty favorable. They caught a couple grammatical errors, yeah. which we can point out. Uh, they they liked our uh, the the uh, removal of the institutions of human care. They were also happy with the uh, removal of the group homes and family homes. Uh, they didn't provide any additional feedback with regards to the automotive uh, service and repair because they had already done that in 2021, uh, but they also didn't have any negative feedback with respect to that. So overall, I was very pleased with the results of the planning commission. Mm -hmm. I think there were, I noticed one note. Um, I think it, it was actually in, um, I'm looking through the wrong one here. That's too many dang handouts tonight. Um, it was regarding the uh, the institutions of human care. Um, I believe it was our intention to remove it, and it looked like they said um, basically the same thing like, that it wasn't noted anywhere else in the um, right. Yeah, in the. But it, it seemed like there were, there was another part where they were telling us to remove it later on. Uh, the only thing I saw that was actually truly a mistake is on section 9.2. So this is page eight of the staff report yeah. where they noted that there was an incomplete sentence. Um, so they told us to fill that in if that's what you're we referring to. Yeah. So other than that, uh, the, the, except the family homes was on page five of the planning commission report and they just said staff supports removing this te text as an accessory use because okay. it allows more than one more than one that's, structure. Okay, so that's where i was misreading it because it was we had already made that recommendation and they're just saying yeah we agree and good we're a little verbose all right are there any questions or anything that anybody wants to add in after reading through the uh planning commission I have a couple specific things if we just want to do a share screen yeah, and, and sure. go through the text quickly and then we'll hopefully be able not, to... not be too too long with this. And uh, there were a, a, few, a few other comments I received along the way, so I just wanted to bring those to your attention. Uh, staff reported noted that parking facilities, this wasn't our fault, but facilities that was misspelled, so I just corrected the table of contents and also 9.2's header moving forward. That was as a result of this uh, planning commission staff report. Uh, there was a suggestion, and I think it's a valid suggestion, to change refueling and recharging station to just fueling and charging station. Uh, you normally purchase a charging station for electric vehicles, and so it, it to me made sense, but I don't really care one way or the other. Um, it was just a suggestion to get rid of the re. Anyone strongly opposed to that or? The, all right, so then one question I want to clarify before we start making any edits. If we do make additional edits, do we then have to have another public hearing? We're allowed to make recommend additional modifications, okay. just as the trustees will be able to and make I, modifications. I think we only went with refueling and recharging station because it's grammatically correct, but yes. I don't care one way or the other. I, yeah, I do not. It doesn't matter. You can go with fuel, fuel, and fuel, and charging. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Uh, last night at the meeting, it was brought up that body and fender is somewhat antiquated, and they normally just call it repair at this point. Okay. So they suggested changing it to including paint and collision repair as opposed to paint, body, and fender repair. So okay. that was just a suggestion. I didn't have any problem with it. I don't think it meaningfully changed the scope of what we were attempting to do there. That was already one that we had made. Uh, everything that you see in blue is our proposed amendments. The red is the new text that I've made. So nothing there, uh, nothing with respect to living area and how we define that. Uh, nothing res with respect to the definition of a non-conforming lot, I don't believe. Nothing with respect to that, that was grammatical. Can you go, I'm sorry, go back to the last one. I saw something that is 12. The, the um, sign roof that it's underlined there, E. That's because okay. it's just a gram. They're, they're, I don't think that they like that word, but that's not, that's it's, just the spell checker yep. and gram grammar checker. All right. Uh, the planning commission, the, the staff report actually said move the period to inside of the quote, 
which I think is grammatically potentially correct. But when I looked at how we've done it elsewhere throughout the book, we've done street public inside it and then put the period after the quotes. So I think we should just keep that for consistency. I, that was just something they flagged. Um, so I'm going to reject that comment and leave it as we've pr proposed it as opposed to amending that. That's just one of the words that we already had in there. Same thing, nothing there. There was a question that was brought up about why this was just public, just some feedback that I received. Why are we removing from this section uh, what we what we say is that for purposes of calculating the living area, all areas within, and it used to say basements, garages, breezeways, terraces, or porches, and any accessory building or structure shall not be included. We removed all of that language, basement, garages, breezeways, terraces, or porches, and, and why do we remove that? And the answer to that is because that's already within the definition of a living area. So we really don't want to have that note in two different spots because it's very easy for future commission, you know, future commissions to change it in one spot and forget to change it in another spot. So it's just better to remove it. So that's why we just left uh, for purposes of calculating the living area, all areas within any accessory building are also excluded. But that doesn't, there's no meaningfully change meaningful change in sc scope because all those other things are already excluded by definition. Just some comment that we had, I wanted to explain again why we were doing that. Again, no changes to any of those things. So that's why it's going fast. Here, I've just changed the refueling and recharging again to fueling and charging. Okay, with respect to the restoration of damaged buildings or structures, uh, this is where we changed it from the, such restoration shall commence within a period of two years. It used to say be completed within two years. And I think, you know, the chair already explained uh, why we, we did that for primarily because it might take more than two years for you know, or up to two years for insurance. them to get their insurance through processing. Uh, there was a question as to we we don't there's no requirement for the completion because we removed the completion. Uh, my comment on that would be that our zoning certificate, which they have to obtain, expires in two years. And so we already have a commencement within two years and then the certificate would expire within two years. And then if they wanted to apply again, they'd have to get another zoning certificate. And I think that that would trigger a variance. Uh, they would have to get a variance because their project will no longer commence within two years. But that would be the question is, do we want to impose some hard deadline for completion of that project, or do we just want it to follow exactly what we follow for other homes that are built? And we don't have any required completion time frame. We just, for this, have a commencement time frame. It was a comment that was made and just I, something I want to raise. Personally, I think we just treat it the same way we treat every other home. Um, you know, your home burned down. We're not going to give you, a, all right, build it back at, at by this date. Um, we don't do that with anyone that wants to build on their property. Then all right, we're saying, all right, you're going to commence within two years. And then if it takes two years to build the home, and that's that's a great opportunity for the zoning inspector and the zone board of BCA to look at it and say, okay, yeah, they're making reasonable progress or sorry, we can't approve it anymore. That was my sentiment as well. I just wanted yeah. to make sure that the commission was aware of that comment because I thought it was a it was a useful comment. Again, this was the comment of the Planning Commission facilities was misspelled in 9.2. Uh, this was a comment by the staff uh, on the staff report that we had deleted a portion that we shouldn't have deleted. So at the very end, it said will be used. 
Um, so I just reintroduced will be used here because it was an incomplete sentence without that incorporation. So it says for floor area, where floor area is designated as the standard for determining parking space requirements, public floor area will be used. So just public floor area, which isn't again, correct. Any comments on that before I move on? Uh, someone noticed that this three had not been deleted. That will be deleted automatically as part of formatting. It's just that in a track change version of a Word document, I can't delete that three. It, it's just won't go away. So that will be fixed when, uh, when Suzanne prepares the final document. Again, just changing refueling and recharging to fueling and charging. Same thing. I want to make sure I don't think I missed anything. Nope. That's that one. That one. These are all, that was it. So those were the only changes that were made relative to the text as we had previously reviewed and approved of it. Thank you for running through that, all the work you put into it. Um, so if there's no further comment on that, I mean, I think it's, we've put enough time and effort into this. We've got enough of uh, the response from uh, Planning Commission. We can probably forward this on to the trustees and have them have their public hearing and amend the zone resolution. So if anybody wants to make a motion. Uh, I, so move, I move that we move this on to the trustees for their review and recommendations or acceptance. Or as, in, as, as amended. Mod with, as as yeah. modified or yep. amended. Yep, correct. Second. Second by Ms. Crew. Please call the roll. Marzullo? Yes. Crew? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. yes. Manley? Yes. Caleb? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. So, um, that kind of takes care of the entire agenda. So um, I'm not prepared for a chairman's report. So I guess. Um, well, you Ms. just Ms. read that one line that's there. Next, yeah, the next next regular zoning commission meeting for February 1st is scheduled for February 1st, 2024 at seven o'clock. Ms. Crew, do you have anything? I do not have anything. Mr. Fisher? No. Mr. Manning? No, not at Mr. this time. Yes. No, sir. All right. Ms. Engelman? Nope. Nothing. Mr. Wilson, anything no, more? Thank you. All right. Well, with the other two trustees. Said, other two trustees, Excuse anything? Me. No. All right. Um, with that being said, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. <laughs> moved by Fisher, seconded by Crew. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. None opposed. And we're adjourned at 8.15. Uh -huh. We have a lot For a text amendment.